This is CyberSmiley of CyberSmiley.net. Um, I'm afraid my co-conspirator is n not going to be here this for this particular episode. Um, I have some uh, things happening in his life and uh, just can't make it tonight. So it'll be me doing solo work. Um, but definitely send out some uh, good vibes cosmically to uh, Wisdom. Um, definitely needs it. Also, I'd like to uh, thank Cyber Nation again for hosting these uh, wonderful episodes. So tonight you're just going to hear me kind of ramble a little. So um, <clears throat> with Wisdom Gone, uh, my plan was kind of continue this previous episode in which I started creating uh, the scenario for Cyberpunk Red. Again, you could adapt this to uh, 2020 as well um, so let's get into it let's go here All right so we got Terry three fingers um, did a little editing uh, just cosmetic to the file just for my own sanity um, so if you haven't watched the episode I kind of plotted out a quick scenario that's going to be a one-shot that you could use for a con or um, running it on Discord uh, or just picking it up and going to your local game shop and just hosting a game <clears throat> in which you can run. Um, and basically I'm just showing you how I plot out things um, and how I kind of do design work for, for a scenario. Um, again, just to recap, the scenario is kind of inspired from the movie Snatch, uh, in which a jewel was stolen, <laughs> or, or misplaced, and, uh, you know, the comedy is, is uh, um, uh, blah, blah, sorry, kind of out of it right now, but <laughs> long day of work. Anyways, uh, so the basic plot of this is the party is going to be hired, contracted, uh, intimidated into finding a data mule called Terry Three Fingers. Um, the employer wants Terry ASAP. Uh, I did kind of change her name. So let me just uh, quickly get that updated. Okay. Um, the player wants them. Again, who hired the party? It's really up to you. There's various options. I just listed out a couple of them um, for my own prerogative. Whether, and it also depends upon the the party makeup, right? On who's going after it. If it's a a group full of uh, cops. Um, you know, then the law is looking to uh, get Terry because of the data she holds in her head. Corporations uh, might have corporate secrets that they're looking for, and the fixer is just important um, important to the cartels or whatever uh, organization the fixer is hiring that person for. Um, so, again, like the movie Snatch... Uh, so I'm basing Terry on Freddy Four Fingers. So Terry is a gambling addict. Um, and the employer will tell Terry, or tell the group, where Terry was last seen. So it's kind of the, the hook into the adventure. 
Um, I was reading up in uh, Cyberpunk Red book, uh, the beats, right, in which you have your, your hook, you have a development, uh, you have a cliffhanger, and then you have resolution. Um, and each beat kind of, as, as the book puts it, you want to base it around about half an hour for each beat. Um, I kind of do that in my way. Um, I just never had a, someone explain to me exactly what that was and, and how you write these out. Um, so it's nice to uh, kind of understand that and I'm kind of doing a little bit right. Uh, one thing about the uh, this my initial stab at this was I really didn't have any books open, so I didn't have any real numbers quite yet to uh, add to this uh, to this scenario. So, um, so <clears throat> Carrie uh, she tries to avoid combat. Uh, when rescued, will question on who the party is working for and we'll need a persuasion again this persuasion simple mm, I would say it would probably be difficult role to convince her she'll be safe um, let's see if the group fails They probably will need to, uh, sorry, sneeze is coming on. Every enter in some way, non-lethal, preferably. Um, that's also, would want this, time constraint. Um, back alive that's another sticking point um, you might want to make to the group you're playing with um, specifically saying get her back alive whether or not the group actually brings her back alive that's another matter um, but whoever's hiring her wants her alive uh, if the crew group fails to convince her so, and then they need to apprehend her, preferably non-lethal. She will attempt to get away. Um, so here I would also say uh, roll netrunner uh, combat skills. She's going to be weak, so let's put her at a bod. And again, I got some things open now, so I can actually go through and take a look at what I need to stat her out with. Cool and will. So, bod. Five. Will, because that will generate her hit points. Giving her an eight. Reflex. Again, not too high. Int eight. And dot 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 for the rest of the stats. <coughs> I probably also want to give her evasion. So let's just format this a little better. Oh, come on. Skills. Evasion. Um, pick a 12. And again, you don't have to stat every single stat. Uh, on this but you should at least give the necessary skills you think are going to play in uh, into the character um, 
I don't think her gambling skill will take effect. But evasion, um, she really isn't going to be doing much fighting, so I'm not going to give her any fighting skills. Uh, interrogation. Mm. Yeah, I think that's about it. All I really need at this point to uh, get her going. So again, the, I, uh, my expectations of a party composition or, or what I kind of want the party to be made up of is one fixer or uh, executive. Um, one net runner maybe if the if the group has it. Same goes with the techie and the med techie. Uh, the rest is going to be made up of nomad solos and cops. Um, and then I well, I could probably say you know, one. A little rocker. Um, if you've been listening to our previous episodes, you know I'm not that big of a fan of rockers. Um, so the first scene, again, we have a card game um, hosted by the Tiger Claws. Uh, gave one NPC, Kudo Subaru, Subaru um, who's very shady, soft-spoken, so kind of drawing him from the nerds uh, movie uh, as a character. So he's kind of a... Eh, he's not a friendly guy. Um, the four tire club bodyguards around him. So with them, again, we can say uh, Mook's... Right, um, two will have assault rifles, uh, the others one will have sword arms and they'll all have swords. Um, there's some other gamblers who are going to be there in the building. Uh, this is happening at a restaurant. So, <clears throat> here we can go to my wonderful fantasy names site. Um, underneath, uh, wait, places, you can find a ooh, pizzeria. Ooh, I wonder if they, yeah, he doesn't have, I figure if they have pizzeria, but whether or not they would have a, a sushi, uh, entry. But, so, let's just go with restaurant names. And Incredible Hog. Nice. Um, and, 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 nothing for me there. Fire and Ice. <laughs> Trilogy, Forester After Dark, The Chopping Barbecue. That's interesting. The Oval Lantern. Yeah, let's go with that guy so give this a title the oval lantern oval lantern restaurants again the employer is going to point the party into this direction, and that's where they'll meet uh, Kudo. Um, yeah, so we got the necessary NPCs here. Again, I'm not going to show you what the MOOC, MOOC stats um, in the stream, but you can basically look them up in the Cyberpunk book. And now, what can the players learn? Or how, what, how and what, right? How, what can the players learn? Or the party learn? Uh, if they use force, 
Right. So if they try to do an intimidation. Intimidation still in here. And again, I really want to try to do red. I mean, I haven't run red. I've been in a few games of red, but I really want to uh, get this so I can run this at a con. Um, and they have bribery. Interrogation. Yeah, it's interrogation. Interrogation. Interrogation or showing weapons. Uh, he's going to flee if caught. So, this is what whoop, Kudo would do. Um, and then here you can say um, if two of the bodyguards are dropped, the rest will flee. <coughs> or surrender. Um, and if you guys have any ideas or feedback you want to give me, by all means, throw it up in chat. Um, so if they negotiate, uh, so it would be a conversation or streetwise, I would make that 15. And 17 is professional. All right. Um, other, other option will be to have Kudo uh, invite player. To a game of cards. If they win, I'll give them info on Terry. If they lose, he asks them to. Do a quick, quick job, uh, and he'll give them the info. So <clears throat> this kind of presents an opportunity in which you could give a quick hello, Shinobi. Um, uh, if you are just joining, Wisdom, uh, I'm afraid, is not here this week, so I'm flying solo, and basically I am uh, refining the scenario I created back in last month's episode. Um, so, welcome all. So if they lose, he'll ask them to do a job, so this can give lead to an optional um, side gig optional. Right, and what does he want the party to do? Um, deliver a package to to a store keeper. And wait for reply. Right? See side side gig below. <coughs> wait for reply. And then to the players. 
kudo is setting them up. Keeper is a front for one of the scavs operations. And we know how much we love scavs. Um, to the store keeper. Escalate. And again, if you look at the main book, you kind of see one mook equals one edge runner. So even though in the card game I specify four bodyguards, here I will say one mook per player. Um, Kudo. Um, he'll give the party Eddie's for. See, the problem with this economy is it's, in red, it seems very balanced. And I know some people always say you should keep your party poor, but what is the reality of it? So, what would I give them to not have them beat the living hell out of me? Um... Uh, party eddies five give the party 500 EBs or if pressed will go up to 750 And tell the group about the Maelstrom fight. Right, so <clears throat> with this, depending upon um, what happens here, right, and, and what their actions are, and also how much time you have will determine whether or not you want to have this optional gig. Um, so the party will learn that Kudo talked to Terry, who is interested in a big score. Uh, he told her about an underground fight hosted by Maelstroms. <clears throat> so here, um, again, this is taking place in an abandoned warehouse. Uh, similar to what I did up here, I would put in a location. Location. We all know Maelstrom hangs out in north side. Um, if we take a look, oh, what is it? 
Night City I.O. There we go. Let's close this menu. You can actually take a look at the city. Um, but this is for 2077. I thought they had the... I'm going to do... Red, maybe not. Yeah. Oh well. But it, it, that's a good utility. How's it going, BBS or BB Swaggins? Let me find the map. Do, 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 do. guys don't have the PDF for red I would suggest getting it um, having these indexes is wonderful uh, just gotta find Time of the red and we'll go here and just start finding city map so this is just for me to get some understanding of where things are and where people will be traveling. Um, so they're in old Jap town or Japan town and uh, go into north side. All right, underground fights. <coughs> um, takes place at the abandoned warehouse there's a pit fight pit in the middle where fights are fights are taking place Terry's already been uh, kidnapped so again confrontation or sorry this would be the development or cliffhanger Right, for a beat. Um, so they... Oh, right. So first they need to try to get in. And it's invitation only. So they can do a streetwise, 15. Bribery depends on money. Um, so for bribery... Let's see this again take a look at here heroic 17 so bribery I would say is DB 17 minus 1 per 100 EB mmm nah He's just a, a bouncer. He'll take 50. Or the netrunner can uh, find an access point with the list. So, here, uh, sneak their way in, lockpick security systems. Again, uh, I think last session I kind of started going really through this. So, here's where I would actually want to flesh out some of that stuff so I would actually come here and go to my net architect generator uh, floors there's not going to be a lot of them so let's start off with six um, difficulty I'm going to say standard let's just generate a quick one so we have a whisper or wisp uh, file mm. yeah some of this we'll have to change so in here we're going to move or change uh, the various types so we're going to do a wisp and then we're going to do password and 
password. All right, save that. Uh, and then we're going to have another an ASP. That's fine. But we're actually going to move that. And I want to have it forked off. Uh, perfect. So that's a file. Data files. This contains a list of clients who are invited. Um, fighters. Uh, so basically, this data file will contain some of the Maelstrom stuff. <clears throat> so we have a file, but we also want to have. Control node, All right, which is going to be uh, security cameras. Um, again, eight should be fine. Save and what else? Nodes. Pick again, do a DB fifteen. Um, so they're just going to sneak their way in, <coughs> which is there's, uh, there's a back door and a security. Camera. Uh, a perception DV thirteen to spot door lock is is DV fifteen. Still have strength feet. We're in this body. Turn stance contortion. Uh, da, da, da. Hmm. Okay, so that is going to require or bash it. Bond verse DV thirteen <coughs> um, security systems. Already talked about that with the hidden security camera, Netrunner node as above. Need. We're not going to go with a 15, we just need a 13. Because most of the staff is going to be. Uh, door is DV 15. Uh, it's going to be preoccupied. Get rid of that. 
and then uh, um, do we want to have any other uh, nodes so <clears throat> I would say yes just because of the maelstroms. So there's a control node, so this will be security cameras. We'll do that, change that out. Uh, here we'll actually put in a defense system. Um, where that is, we'll figure it out. So yeah, so now I will take this and I will save it as a BNG. Yeah. And a copy. Let's see how this works. Confrontation. Commit. Architect. No. Hmm. All right, so I need to save this as a PNG. And copy. There we go. Shrink that up. Right. Do this. Throw this in here. Make it a little smaller. this document a little better. There we go. Really don't care about the cache. Uh, definitely want to have the description. Program. Alright. Password DB ten good C ASP. Don't care about that. And, and we have the cameras. Copy fifteen data files. Uh, quick description and fifteen E. Again, to be determined. Dot, dot, dot. <coughs> so, I got the a data architect quickly created for the group uh, if I need to. And, yeah, going on from there. Just want to format this a little better. In line, good. Um, 
so getting in invitation only talked about that once in they'll be able to do a bit of socialization and watching the beginning uh, conversation mm, that would be higher to find out about Terry mm, I don't think yeah, let's find out about specifics specifics on Terry Learned she was hanging with some maelstrom. And now, let's go with 13. Um, Terry, they are approached. Maelstrom with five goons behind him. Uh, let's find a image. Shayborg. Again. Always look for images that you can uh, use in the game. Um, helps out. Mm. Hmm. And uh, really great. Let's go with. Uh, Cyberware. Let's see what we we'll get from Cyberware. Of course, 2077. Of course. Let's go with uh, Bionic. Man. Cybernetic re enhanced humans. There we go. Sounds fun. See what kind of options you have. What does he look like? Yeah, he is. He is Maelstrom. No, oh, there we go. This is a good one. Um, socializing. Parties uh, are approached. Approached by. So again, I want to give this guy a name, just because if you give names to things, players always find that um, nice, and they think you've done a lot of work, uh, which of course you have, uh, and all players should appreciate everything you do. Um, but it is what it is, so, hmm, let's see about nicknames, Creed, Honesty, Grace, Gonzo, Blossom, Creep, ooh, I like that, by Creep, Maelstrom, with five goons.
party members. So he's going to try to intimidate the party members to get lost. So they can talk their way out of it. Um, which would be persuasion. Persuasion. DB um, 17 because he doesn't like to be persuaded or interrogate which is another skill I would use for um, intimidation so interrogate would be a little bit lower because Maelstrom likes power and strength so, when you're coming up with uh, any difficulty numbers, always ha have that in the back of your head. Uh, you should always allow your players the option of doing different skill tests. And based upon those skill tests will determine whether it's easier or harder um, for that player to succeed at a specific role. Um, I already did that. Yeah, so for a map, actually, I think I have a map somewhere um, that I can use. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I had it. Oh, I think I know. Do, do, do. So. A couple months ago, um, I had my current Cyberpunk 2020 players um, have a situation similar to this, uh, in which they had to go into a warehouse and that had uh, pit fighting going on um, to try to nab a guy for, because that guy was the brother of the pirate who, who had kidnapped one of the players fiancés so um, that is the great thing about life paths is you can basically generate a um, scenario just around one entry in the life path so um, that's the one cool thing about life path uh, red I would like to see a little more um, types of life path <coughs> like I think the big wins and big losses are a, a great um, a great part of the game. Uh, I know there is a um, kind of a, a I don't know a um, I'm trying to think of the word. I think a lot of people would rather have a lot more control over how powerful a a player is. Um, and also allow that player the ability to, um, shoot. Uh, I, I, I this. um, to kind of govern where stats go, <coughs> how things are rolled, um, and not give players an extra advantage for whatever reason um, than just having having the dice determine it right so <clears throat> in some systems your background can can kind of ruin your character before you even start playing with your character um, 
for example, if you get the, you, you, well, you can start off with like drug addiction. You can get like a minus five to your appearance stat in Cyberpunk 2020. Um, you can take some dil uh, disabilities uh, are forced on you and some players do not like that. Uh, and I think the new wave of of players don't appreciate some of uh, some of that um, possible uh, outcomes of having something negative happen to their character, um, which to me is is great role playing. Um, you can have some really uh, good memorable interactions uh, happening where is that map all right I lost the map so I'm not gonna waste too much time but um, to do find ice Nice house map. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I already drew up a, a map in which there's it's a warehouse, uh, and you know a pit has been dug in, and so I can probably uh, use that. His is arrival to the party. Okay. So, creep is the lieutenant who confronts them. We already did underground location, control cut. Um, so what is creep going to do uh, for the party, right? So if they succeed, um, talk their way out, persuasion, uh, fight their way out, um, again, if they defeat creep or sorry let's just say if they kill creep creep they will have 20 maelstroms pour down on Um, if they just, if they, ooh, if they challenge him to a fight, they go to the pit and play it out. So again here, creep, um, stats, we'll do body. Uh, give him a nine. Reflex, eh, he's a little slow. Will, uh, give him a seven. I don't think there's too much, uh, combat skills. Uh, we'll just do base, uh, I forgot. I also need a dex. Seven, so base twelve plus one d ten, right? <coughs> um, for fighting. Um, party. Oh, 
creep will try to intimidate the party to get lost. Um, again, they might try to talk to him. They might try to fight. Um, so, how do you make sure fighting is not a party's option, right? So how do you want to do that? So, fight their way out. So here, make group roll. So here I would say make them do roll a, or was it a perception? Perception DV. And we're going to keep this low um, because the group 13 every day, DV 9 for the party to see that there are over two dozen maelstrom roaming about each with varying weapons we'll also spot the defensive systems All right so again Twenty millstroms pour down on them. Then we have challenge creep to a fight. Creep will have respect for the player. Player and buy him a drink. So basically, win or lose. So this allows you the ability to kind of move the plot along. Um, but again, you don't have to let the players know that this is going to be the outcome. Keep them guessing on how Creep is going to uh, treat them, right? So if, if they feel that they challenge him to a fight that if they lose it's going to be bad for them um, it will be because they will get some uh, take some damage but it's also a, a nice way in which <clears throat> the party can kind of be at the edge of their seats um, I think an interaction like this will also have um, betting which you also want to make sure that you keep that in the back of your head of how you want to handle gambling. Um, again, this is kind of a high stakes area, so um, you want to make sure you put in a limit. Uh, high stakes, high stakes, fighting, no limit. Um, and again, here you might want to put in the odds. Odds should be creeps body divided by players body. Um, Right, 
so if the person has um, or the player is fighting and they have a body of like six you know the the odds are was it three to two um, and that's how you come up with the odds so they if they're if, if the players fighting creep is the same you probably want to give uh, just a little more advantage to creep um, because he is a resident of this place and people know how he fights and they're going to assume he fights more. So if the players say, hey, I want to bet, there's a quick formula you can use to come up with some, generally some odds. Um, so Bullet Tooth Tony. So he is going to be in the Tooth Tony. See, he's looking for Cherry as well. He is uh, investigating the scene. Where she went. Tony is a rival to the party and working against them. Right? So Tony would be the antithesis of why they're looking for him, right? So. <clears throat> Um, he might be hired by the cartel to find her. He might be hired by the rival corporation to find her. Or he's part of the crime syndicate that's trying to find her. Right? So he's the opposition. And again, he's going to be... Um, he is going to be... Uh, Kind of a mini boss, right? So he's going to be the end fight <clears throat> for the parties. Um, the party uh, will need to make. A, and again, what you could do here is kind of hide your role and say, hey, Tony rolled this. Um, but the reality is sometimes I just don't do roles. So party will need to make a perception of DV we're gonna say let me think about what the party would have All right so I would say 21 to spot him um, Maybe human perception too. Uh, yeah. Actually, it would be <clears throat> a human perception. Spot him watching, watching them. Right. Um. So, what can the party learn? Um, one other thing is, want to do what? Tell me. Let's find a good image of him. Mm 
So, <clears throat> what time is it? Eight o'clock. All right. I'm going to continue rambling on for the next uh, 40 minutes or so. Um, keep the episode around tw two hours like we usually do. Uh, so, we have Bullet, bullet Tooth Tony to spot him watching them. scenario um, so we got that now <clears throat> here is the thing that we need to figure out is what can the clarity learn and from whom and from whom whom right if they fight Creep in the pit, we will provide them with with what happened to Terry that she was. Kidnapped earlier in the evening. Description of the vehicle that took her. Um, Markings. Uh, creep says war. Where? War. Valentino's. All right. In the pit, you will tell them that. Um, Tooth avoid the party and attempt to lose them in the crowd. Um, so how else are the parties going to find out? Uh, so, yeah, there's going to be a bartender. Um, talk with the bartender. Um, a 
again, persuasion, DV 15, bribery, DV 13, um, interrogation, DV 17. The bartender is not going to take kindly to people who or treat him like shit. Um, mention he spotted her with some Valentinos. Um, so, how do we get the party to know where the kidnappers are? Um, so, it's Valentino's, markings of Valent Valentino's, um, but where? So, again, this would lead them to going into Valentino territory. So, party needs a streetwise roll. Um, streetwise, actually, you could probably also get into media. Let's go. Get it done. Uh, roll abilities. Um, so credibility. Versus that. So uh, the media would say or media follows a substantial. Fixer with their street deal. Sorry, operator. Um, contacts. I'm uh, just refreshing my reach. So what you could do is just um, put this as a skill roll, operator. Um, operator. This, you know, I would say put it as a, a DV13. And again, it's going to be lower sheet-wise DV15. Because you want to be able to <coughs> have the party follow those clues or 
or not come to a, a blockage. Um, <clears throat> And the group can also follow up with any of their contacts to learn about the kidnapping. Leave possible location. Coming here, coming up with a name. Go to my trusty sites. Juan David Dengra, Jose Casosa, Bruno Sancho. Oh, I like that. Bruno Sancho, a.k.a. <clears throat> and we want to give him a nickname. Again, people love things like that. Genie, horse, bash, side, undertaker, a.k.a. the undertaker. Mm. Small slash... Bow, horse, mm. uh, let's we'll go with Undertaker, aka Undertaker. Tenants in the Latinos don't know. Why he nabbed her, but he has no, he hangs out at a bar. got here um, again location eh, and then let's get that um, bar um, Terry is being kept in basement um, they have no clue did it she was a big spender Yeah, so, again, they have no clue who she is and what she is. Um, so, kidnappers, I would say two, well, <clears throat> one mook, mook per player, hanging out in the bar. Um, two to three hanging outside, two downstairs with the under, under taker. Um, so quickly, let me see if I can find. Actually, have some images I've already downloaded that I could use for the Undertaker. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Mm -mm. 
So NPCs. Got Bruno Sancho. Taker. And we got an image for him. Square that off. Ooh, how did you get all the way up there? Control Z. That was odd. No, what are you doing? Whoa, that's. What the hell's going on there? Again, we'll do stats. Body seven, reflex seven, dex seven, combat skill uh, twelve plus. All right, push in. Again, let's try to paste that. Nope. Control Z. Paste. Mm, okay. Now. Okay, that works fine. Let's reduce his size. Just a little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. Okay, you just don't like going down that size. Kidnap. Valentino kidnappers. Um. So they'll be interrogating, 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 uh, Terry about her cash. She lets slip that she has a head full of valuable data. Destroyed. Right, so it's she is attempting to negotiate her way out. Um, so confrontation. Party will fight. I don't think I would put in a, a net architect here, um, just because they're not really going to do anything or, or have that kind of cash. So, comforting the par kidnappers in the party, confrontation with the kidnappers, party needs to take them all out. Um, if 75% of them are taken out with Undertaker as one of those, the rest will flee. So he yeah, probably make him a little higher. Um, just because he's a lieutenant. Again, I would go to the book, stat this out a little better. Um, and then we have conclusion. 
right? Which would be conclusion. Bullet tooth Tony. So as you rescue Terry, Tony makes an appearance. Start shooting at the group. Now, keep in mind that since he is a rival and she has a head full of data that the rival does not want to get out, Tony will attempt to kill her. So Tony's aim is to kill Terry. And the rest of the party is well. Um, yeah. So he's a mini boss. Um, would Tony have additional support? Um, maybe. I would say yes. He accompanied by two soldiers, gangers, bodyguards. If Tony succeeds, party will not get paid. Um, if the party brings in the body of Terry, they will get half pay. Um, just because, you know, they'll try to attempt to uh, extract that data from her skull. Um, party kills or escapes Tony and returns Terry. They get paid in full. The party attempts to kidnap Terry them themselves and ransom her. by the buyer um, use deadly force All right so that's kind of it in the conclusion um, I might put in some additional skill checks depending upon what the, the players try to do during that scenario uh, as I'm running it um, but yeah, this is kind of pretty much done. There's a few tweaks I need to do. Enter certain numbers. Um, update this. Yeah. Um, but overall, it's, uh, my thinking is this is probably going to be, you know, three to four hour play. Um, Try to avoid combat where you can. Um, if you are in a um, in a set time limit, for example, con game, I would try to avoid too much combat. 
um, because combat can take a long time. Um, I've, and especially if you're playing Cyberpunk 2020, um, streamline it, make it quick, make it easy, uh, and don't get bogged down with certain fights, right? So, for example, uh, <clears throat> situation at the Oval Lantern, this should not be an all-out brawl. Like I said, if two of the bodyguards are dropped, the rest are going to flee. And that's how <clears throat> you kind of can um, pull combat away. Now, some players will be like, well, I need to kill all the witnesses. Well, that kind of reduces their timetable. And again, I just estimated around how long each scene would take. Um, I'm thinking this would be more like 45 minutes to an hour. I could stretch that out. Um, and again, <clears throat> this is kind of like a high level. When you're actually playing the game, you would role play a little more. You would get more description um, in here. Describe how they approach the warehouse at night. Um, they hear music playing. There's lights coming from the inside, but the rest of the area is pitch black. Uh, you see two guards on the outside along with uh, other civilians hanging out as they enter, as you enter the building. And kind of f flesh it out a, a little more um, and describe the interiors of these places. Like for the... <clears throat> um, oval lantern you know as you enter the restaurant it has that air of tackiness of um uh low budget uh asian themed restaurants um there's not too many uh, patrons here the staff seem bored and wander about the hostess comes up to you and asks how many in your party uh, you might want to say here do, do, do. What's about the how do they know give them a password right to tell the hostess that will get them into the game area right and here you would say you know the person or the hostess leads you towards the back of the restaurant she looks at you as she uh, punches in a code on a, a war, wall panel it slides away to reveal a smoky gambling den uh, with various patrons and games going on So, again, <clears throat> you want to, so this is just the bare bones to help, um, but as you run games, and this is true for most scenarios that you, you would pick up and, and buy, is make them your own, give them, expand upon their description, um, and give them uh, more feeling for your parties. Uh, and don't be afraid to change any of these events, or or at any time because the players are gonna are notoriously will try to um change change the various events to the way they want and you as a referee will try to guide them into the right course of action don't be overly uh controlling don't ever tell your player your character does this um, because you can always manipulate players into doing one action or another. For example, the, the underground fight scene. Um, if they try to do a fight, you get, say, make a perception roll. Oh, you notice that there are, you know, over two dozen maelstrom 
hanging out in this place. All of them are armed and highly cybered. That's going to intimidate the players not to take action. Now, is that going to work for all players? No, because some players are just think they are gods and nothing can hurt them. Um, <clears throat> those players will often, in my games, learn very quickly that their character will die uh, painfully and the other players uh, will often just walk away <laughs> and let that player die on their own. Um, so, yeah, so that's about it um, for this particular episode. Again, uh, it's a little short than our normal episodes, but uh, Wisdom isn't, wasn't able to make it. Hopefully he will be available uh, in two weeks for our next episode. So our next episode, we're going to be doing a review of Home of the Brave. Uh, that wonderful book, uh, getting into the details on that. Also, Wisdom, well, we want to try to do an MA. M-A-M-A, Ask Me Anything, uh, for both our sites. So Wisdom's going to have his, in which you can talk to him about um, Interlock Unlimited, why he did it, uh, what rules are different, um, and, and by all means, ask him as many questions as you can. Uh, I'll check out the bottom. Yep. Um, also, I'll be doing a... Uh, ask me anything on my site. Um, I do plan on starting to create some videos for my site as like tutorials because I, as a developer, I think, you know, I think well, maybe I need to uh, uh, actually explain how my thought process on how my utilities work. So, uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Cyber Nation Uncensored for hosting uh, Tales from the Forlorn Dope. Especially Rob, uh, if you guys come to this Twitch channel, um, there is a uh, game that Rob does on Thursday nights uh, over on Sirenscape's Twitch. Uh, that actual play of Cyberpunk Red is fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to give them a shout out. And also check out uh, Capricious Nature. So, um, various live plays uh i have caught in some of his episodes and i'm in, i've been enjoying it so by all means check out all stuff uh cyber nation uncensored um you can check me out at my site at cybersmiley.net that's cyber smiley without the uh ending e um and also go check out wisdom site at datafortress2020.com um He's got a lot of good stuff over there. Tons of background material that you can uh, use in your games. So, all right. And also check out CyberNationUncensored.com. And that site, there's a bunch of stuff over there um, for anything cyberpunk. So, all right. I will see you later, Gatos. Have a great night.